Well, welcome back, everybody. I know it's been a while since we've had a latte. And to be honest with you, I've been going through it. You know, I, uh, I started this whole latte with Yate to be an encouragement to people. And then I got challenged myself with, as this whole lockdown has gone on, got locked in my head and fell into a rabbit hole where all I could think about was me. And who knows that whenever you think about yourself the most in the world, that can be a really depressing and limiting, limited place to be. And so um, I kind of tripped out for a minute, mentally, spiritually, like, God, where are you? Why is this happening? This isn't what I signed up for. I had plans and this lockdown and the virus really is throwing everything off. Wah. And God understands. He's big enough. He understands um, when I'm frustrated, when I'm hurting, when I'm confused. Also, though, because I have relationship with him, he says, you don't have to understand it all right now. Just come hop in my lap and let me hold you. And this too shall pass. And it did. It did. And here I am back with a latte with Yate. But tonight, let's do something different. It's not just a latte with Yate. Let's have some popcorn. There's a movie I did some years back that I was a part of, and I played a character in the movie called The Mustard Seed of Chad. And this whole movie was based on Chad being a happy-go-lucky, life is great, um, youth pastor who quickly got hit with the storms of life and lost his faith and lost his way. And this movie was about community and the body of Christ circling around him and encouraging him and him landing on love. How many people right now need to be reminded that this too shall pass, God's for us, not against us. It's not what we signed up for, but we were created for such a time as this. He knew that this would happen. And if you can hear this, and if you're watching this, congratulations. That means you're here in the land of the living. God still has a plan and a purpose for your life. It may be frustrating. It may not be what you thought it looked like today. However, God says it's working out for your good and for his glory. We can't lose. That's good news. So, Matthew 17, 20, with this movie, The Mustard Seed is based on, it says, he replied, because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And so, I have to trust God's word. Numbers 23 tells me that he's not a man that he can ever lie to me, nor does he have to ever repent. His word is true. And so he's saying, Yate, if you can have faith just this little, the mustard seed is one of the tiniest seeds in the world. But once it grows and it, start, it turns into the biggest bushel in the world. And so I think of myself as a mustard seed and turning into that bushel where birds can plant nests and, and animals can seek refuge from the heat. God wants us to be like a mustard seed. Starts out really small and minuscule, but turns into the biggest covering for other people. And so um, it's a good movie. And I, I don't know. I just hope you got something from all of that. Um, God is saying, have faith this small and I'm going to do huge things with it. Don't grow weary in doing well. Don't grow weary in doing well. Easier said than done, but do it anyway. God will meet you where you're at and we can go down a rabbit hole. Just don't start camping out there. Don't stay. Be encouraged. This too shall pass and it is passing. And we'll all be, we'll all be together soon. Um, talking about what we've learned during this time away from each other, what God has shown us, and the things that we appreciate. And I appreciate that God's not asking a whole lot from me. He's asking for me to have the faith in him the size of a mustard seed, and he's going to do amazing things with that. So welcome back. Get your popcorn. Have some popcorn with a latte with Yate. Check out this movie, The Mustard Seed, and we'll talk more about different scenes in the movie that you can relate to as the weeks go on. Thank you for being here. I love you guys. And remember, God, he loves you most.
Mustard seed. Matthew 17, 20. Because of your unbelief, verily I say unto you, if ye have the faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Sometimes, the hardest thing to do is to believe. And I tell you what, when you go down the path of righteousness, and I'm going to say the narrow path of righteousness, the hardest thing to do is sometimes to believe. Amen. The unrighteous, they try to derail take you off the path, try to get you to a place of unrighteousness. They try to take you down a path that they go to. That's not the path we want to go by. You know, I say to you, righteousness is the hardest thing to stay true to. But when you stay down that path, the narrow path of righteousness, everything's going to be okay. Y'all not listening to me. I said everything's going to be okay. Amen. You need help of Jesus Christ. Amen. To throw away the unclean, to throw away the unjust that's in your heart, you have to believe in our Father. Amen. And once you believe in our Father that he can throw away every unclean thought, every unrighteous thought, yes. Yes. that's when you're going to be Amen. on the train of righteousness. Amen. You're going to rejoice. You're going to stand up. You're going to say, I am free. I am clean. 
But you know, I'm going to say, don't worry. And I'm going to tell you, do not worry because the Son, the Holy Spirit, and our Father will guide you back. He will guide you back down that narrow path of righteousness and restore what needs to be restored. So, I'm leaving the restaurant. I hear Uncle Tad comes running out, banging on my window. David, David, you have my wallet? Have you seen my wallet? He didn't know where his wallet was. I'm like, no, I don't have your wallet. Turns out he left it at home. <laughs> no, no, no. You're not telling the truth. I knew that. You did not. You should have saw the look on your face. Man, you were so scared that you had lost that wallet. You were tripping. <laughs> you know, Mary gave me that wallet for my 35th birthday. You know, if I lost that wallet, I would lose my life. You're right. <laughs> I know I'm right. Aunt Mary, I've been wondering, whatever happened to David's pony? <laughs> Dad had a pony? Actually. No, let me let me tell the story because uh -oh. your father wants to tell a whole different story. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you tell it, Aunt Mary. Uh -oh. Okay, years before, your father had a dog, and he wanted to train it to be a movie star like the dog Old Yeller. So he named his dog Little Yellow. Whatever happens to Little Yellow? You know what your dad did? He trained that dog how to sit and how to lay. But he did not teach that dog the most important thing. Which was? To stay. <laughs> <laughs> so that, the dog ran away. And we can find that dog to save our life. So your grandpa bought him a pony. Oh, I was so happy to see that pony. Yeah, David, you thought it was a big dog. So he named it Big Yellow. Dad, you thought it was a dog. Well, they were both kind of yellowish, you know? So, you know, yellow and yellow. I, and I was little. Give me, you know, give my brother a break. So, what happened to him? Your husband Thank decided to make him into a racehorse. A racehorse, David? Look, I was 10 years old. A I pony? was confused. Confused? Confused to say the least. David was crazy to even think that mm -hmm. a pony could win the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> you know, to top it all off, he wanted to be the jockey of that thing. Can you believe hey, that? Which was a great idea until we found out your grandfather couldn't afford him and had to take him back. Dad, you lost your pony? Yeah, I lost my pony. David was okay in the long run. And why is that? Well, because he figured out he was too tall and too heavy to be a, a jockey. <laughs> so he became a minister. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Why? To be like your grandfather, my father. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, you know what else is sweet? You're going to be the next minister. You come from a whole line of ministers. Your Uncle Chad. That's right. Our father, me. You're next. Dad, no thanks. I'll leave the preaching up to you and Uncle Chad. Oh. The, the preaching uh, to us? You know, that sound, that brings back memories. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing that your dad said to me when he was little. And you see uh, what happened to me. time I drank, it was like in seventh grade, man. It was so awesome. <laughs> I remember that. You were out by <laughs> Yeah, man. I had no tolerance at all. But then I woke up in the morning. I was like, ah. Oh. It was awesome, man. Hey, you guys. What's up? Oh, hey, Pastor Blair. Hey, Joey. How are you? So, uh, so you guys are just Hanging out at the park again, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Relax. All right. Well, check this out. Next week, 
And the church is having a barbecue. If you guys can fit it into your uh, busy schedule, maybe you want to help out. Yeah, I'll help. Yeah. Why would we want to do that? Why do you want to do that? Man, I'm all about free food. Just think you can have all the hamburgers and hot dogs and cake you want, you know, and just, uh, just hang out, have a good time. Really? All that just for helping out? Yep. Wow. What do you say? <laughs> Count me in. Right on. How about you? You don't want me to help. What do you mean? Why, why you not? You just don't. All right. All right. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you change your mind, we'll be here waiting for you. And uh, if not, I guess I'll see you hanging out here playing at the park. Huh? You're a loser. Whatever. <laughs> Hey, you guys, I gotta take off, but you guys take care, huh? See you later, See ya. All right. Well, thank you so much, ma'am. And I will be talking to you tomorrow. Okay. Okay, God bless. Bye bye. Hey, man. You really got a lot of books in here. Yeah, I do. Man, what are you doing? When are you gonna preach your first sermon? I don't, I don't know, Chad. I tell you what, man. I, you know what? I'm not trying to say anything to you because I've been talking to you for years ever since you were a young little kid walking up to the office with Dad and I. You know what? Mm -hmm. It's time for you to do it. When do you think you're going to make that first plunge? I don't know. Uh, maybe when you get done preaching. <laughs> do, you, do you know how long that's going to be, man? <laughs> Well, hey, you know, I'm planning to live until I'm 100 years old. So you think that you're going to... 90? No way! Oh I don't God. think so. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let's not be dramatic. It'll be, well, it'll be before then. I okay. just I just don't think I'm ready to do a sermon yet, that's all. You're doing good enough on your own. Um, it's all right. Yeah. Okay. Let me, let me tell you what Dad told us. You know, to be a good pastor in a church, the first thing you're going to have to do you have to travel down that road, that narrow path of righteousness. And trials and tribulations has to play a role in that. And you have to conquer those trials and tribulations for 40 days and 40 nights, just like our Jesus Christ did. And after that, that's when you be a true man of Christ. You remember dad told us that? Yeah, I remember. And only then will you become a great preacher of Christ. And when dad taught us, you know how he taught us. He put a Bible in our face and he says, look, read the Bible. Because all the answers in this, remember that? You know what I also remember is we were supposed to be taking a little fishing trip. What's up with that? <laughs> a fishing trip with you? Man, you think I'm going to take you fishing? <laughs> you know what? I don't know. Right now, you know, the lakes are frozen out there, so if we're gonna go fish, I'm gonna have to go ice fishing. You know, I don't think there's any fish in there anymore. We ain't ever caught any fish in three years. David, do you not understand why we go to the lake? You know, it's not about catching fish. The reason why we go fishing is so I can hang out with you. Because you're my brother, man, I love you. Oh. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> oh man, you know, I think you're gonna make a great minister one day. And I think you know so, right? Thanks, Chad. I just hope I can be as good as you. David. Up to. Hey, Dr. Blair. Hey, Just hanging. You know? Just hanging, huh? So, uh, what are pastors making these days? What are we making? 
Well, I don't know what other pastors are making, but personally, I don't do this for the money. I do this because I love God. And so he takes care of everything I need and my family is well taken care of. I still must have you bank very much. Just look at that piece of junk car you got over there. <laughs> yeah, man. My dad works for airlines. This car is at least 10 times better than that. Good for him. Yeah. Well, what's all this about who has the nicest car? You got to show people, you know. You got a lot of money. It's a status symbol. Status symbol? Yeah. Well, you know, you get saved and you have God in your life. You don't need a status symbol to validate you. Pastor Blair, they don't know what they're talking about. Shut up. I know you, Joey, right? Yeah. But I don't know the rest of you guys. What, do you live around here or go to church somewhere around here? Why would I go to church? So you can just preach to me about being poor? He doesn't preach about staying poor. Who told you that? It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm not going to go to church anyways. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you change your mind, I'll be here waiting. And, uh, you know what? Our youth ministry could use some people like you. <laughs> yeah, you won't get me in the, that church. I'm out of that whole Jesus thing you got going. Yeah. Fair enough. You know, actually, I'm running kind of late. So, uh, you guys take it easy and stay out of trouble, huh? You too, fast. Come in. Pastor Blair, there's a Miss Jackson out there to see you. This is concerning your son. Miss Jackson, her son. Hmm, okay, yeah, sure, and please. Okay. Miss Jackson. Miss Jackson, this is our youth minister, Pastor Blair. Miss Jackson, nice to meet you. I'm Pastor Blair. Yes, thank you for seeing me, Pastor uh, Blair. Please have a seat. Thank you, Rhonda. What can I do for you, Miss Jackson? It's about my son. His name is Eric. He's 17 years old. Okay. And what's wrong? He's out of control. He's into drugs. He belongs to a gang. I just don't know what to do. I have tried to communicate with him. Hmm. Okay. Miss Jackson, if you don't mind my asking, why isn't his father here with you today? He died a few years ago. I'm sorry. It was a car crash. He was a very good husband and provided well for us. But ever since he died, Eric has been angry with him for leaving us. I tried to tell Eric that he didn't leave us. He was taken. Well, Miss Jackson, tell me this. Have you sat down and tried to talk to Eric one-on-one? -on -one? I have tried and tried. But all he ever does is say, Mama, don't touch me. Then he gets mad and he runs out the door and, and I don't see him for hours. I must tell you, I am scared. I'm so afraid that he's gonna sneak out and one of these days he's gonna be hurt or killed. Right. Well, let me ask you this. Have you thought about getting Eric involved in like community, youth, better help programs, better self-esteem No. Programs? My dad always told us that Jesus Christ will help us get through any problem that is presented to us. Well, sounds like your father's a very wise man because that's the truth. Jesus does want to reconcile your family and your children to you. And at the same time, sometimes I think we need help outside of ourselves. How about if I talk to Eric? I, I, you're a very busy man. You don't need to speak to Eric right now. Uh, just tell me what you think I should do. Uh, first of all, it looks like you're doing the right thing just by you being here today. And you're right. Your faith in God, knowing that Jesus will restore things for you, is correct. And what we need to do is get in touch with Eric and see where he's really at. And uh, I can't meet with him this week, but next week we're having our church barbecue and maybe I could talk to him then. How's that? Oh, yes. Thank you very much, You're Pastor welcome. Blair. I definitely will tell him about that. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what I'm here for. And just keep praying for your son and believing that everything will work out. Oh, I will. Thank All you, right. Pastor Blair. Nice meeting you, Miss Jackson. Right. I'll see you next week. Thank you. All right. Come in. Is everything okay? Oh yeah, everything's okay. This is just a concerned mother. She's a good lady. And uh, yeah, everything's gonna be all right for them. 
You're a good youth minister. Oh, you thank are. you, Rhonda. Would you thank make you. a good big people minister, too? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Rhonda. Hey, you guys. Hey, Dad. Hi. What are you guys up to? Just doing all my homework. Right on. Yeah. Just doing your homework, huh? Where's your mom? In the kitchen. I'm right here. Oh, there you are. Hey, hey sweetie. How's it going? Uh, I missed you today. Yeah, it's been a long day at the office. So, what's new? Well, we were in here talking about our kids' education as far as where they want to go to college. Oh, that's all good. Well, where do you want to go to college? Now, Dad, hear me out. I want to go to college to major in business. And Tisa wants to major in economics. Excellent. So what's the problem? That's not the problem. Ask him where he wants to go to college. All right, Joshua, where do you want to go to college? That is not far. OK, how far is not far? It's really close. OK, like? OK, England. England? Cool, no problem. David! What? Kids, why don't you guys go take a 10 minute break? Go watch TV. You, I need you to help me do the dishes. Oh man, I just got home. Come on. <sighs> I can't believe you're talking about <sighs> England. It is so far away. You know what, our kids are gonna change their mind a thousand times between now and the end of next week. They think they want to go to England, then say fine, they can go to England. Well, I guess you're right. Yeah. But I do know one thing. What? Joshua really needs to get his grades up if he wants to go. What's wrong? What's wrong? I haven't been feeling good lately for the past three weeks now. Have you checked your blood sugar? Thank you so much for helping us today at the church. We really appreciate that. Oh, you are very welcome. I'm making a pie, for, a favorite pie for your brother for the banquet. He'll love that. He loves your pies. We all love your pies. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Do you need a ride home? Uh, no, no, my daughter's so big. Oh, oh okay, I see. Okay. All right, well, take care. I'll see you next week. Thank you. So let's open up our doors to the community and show them what type of church this is because we're going to have such a good time tonight. We're going to meet new people and hopefully we can have people to join this church and be a part of our family here. So let's do this. It's going to be fun. Let's pray. Yes, sir. Wait, you wash your hands? Yes, I All did. Right. All right. Good <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey, man, do me a favor. Yeah. I need some help outside. Can you help me get some stuff out of the car? Uh, yeah, just give me like two minutes. I, hey, just two minutes. Oh. I promise, two minutes. Oh, I'll right. be right there. All, All right. right, I'll be waiting. All right, I'll be right, right there. <laughs>
It's cold. Don't fall. Kids, go ahead in the house. I'll be in there in a minute. You know, to top it all off, he wanted to be the Jaja. Oh, Busy? No, Mr. Johnson, what can I do for you? Well, the board and I think we have found our replacement to fulfill your brother's position. That was quick. Pastor Blair, we think you should take the position. Me? Uh, yes. You have a gift. I need to take some time off. Actually, I, I need a few weeks just to get my head together. I, I don't, I know. Pastor Blair, may I call you David? Sure. David, your brother told us that he wanted you to preach because he believed in you. He used to talk about you for years. Look, you're doing a great job as the youth pastor, but it's time for you to step up to the plate. I enjoy being a youth pastor and to be completely honest with you, I don't feel like I have what my grandfather and what my father and what my brother had, that anointing to carry a church. You know, I don't believe in myself right now. I just don't think I, I'm ready. I understand that, David. But we need a senior pastor and the board has chosen you. 
do you accept the position? Dad, are you busy? No. What's up? Can we talk? Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Mom told me that you accepted the position. How do you feel about that? Mm, I don't feel anything, really, to be honest with you. You know, it's like, right now I'm just focused on being strong for you and your mother and your sister. I'm just kind of numb. I understand. So, uh, what are you doing up so late? Well, I was just thinking. Oh, no. Uh-oh. I'm scared to ask. What were yeah, you thinking yeah. about? <laughs> I'm going to stay here for college and to be here with you and Mom. Why do you want to stay here? I thought a week ago you wanted to go to England for college. Why, why do you want to stay here? Dad, I know my grades aren't good, but I'm not stupid. No, you're not. You need me here, and I want to help you out with the church. Oh, really? So what do you want to help out with? The music ministry or even the homeless shelter. Your mom would love that. Yes, I know. Well, uh, it's like this. You're old enough to make your own decisions. You're 13 now, and you know where you'd be best used in the ministry, so I support you in whatever you want to do. You're a good kid, you know that? You're a good dad, too. All right, thank you. Well, you're a good son. And this good dad tells his good son it's time to say good night. Yeah. Call some TV. Uh, no. No. Thanks for asking, though. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. I love you, bud. Hey, Pastor Claire. Hey, Daniels. What's up, man? What's going You're on? You're back. Yeah, I just got back last night from Seattle. How was your trip? Oh, it's great, man. It's good, great. Good. Hey, uh, sorry to hear about your brother. He's a great man of God. I appreciate it. I really miss him. I really miss him. Yeah. Uh, you remember when uh, your father and Chad caught me stealing that bubble gum? Oh, uh, old man Whitaker store? Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they didn't want me to have anything to do with you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the only reason they let me hang out with you after that was because I started coming to church and trying to get it right. Yeah. Or they just pretty much forced you to go to the youth <laughs> ministry. Yeah. That's right. Speaking of, are you still a youth minister over uh, at the new church, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell you what, those kids, man, they, they mean the world to me. I get yes. such a joy from them. And then who better to teach them than somebody like me, you know? Because I was out there with the gangs and I just, I wasn't destined to succeed. Oh, yeah. So, but, uh, hey, I heard you knew the kid who shot your brother. Uh, you stabbed. But I actually never got a chance to uh, meet the kid. I was too busy and planned it out for the next week, and I guess I was just a little too late. Yeah, well, you know, even though you had plans to meet with him, it seems like God had his own plans. You trying to tell me that's the plan God had for my brother? Hey, David, that was the plan, because it did happen. But it isn't fair. <laughs> Life isn't fair. But it's not up to us. It's only up to us to believe and stay on the path that God put us on. That doctor, I'm ready to go home now. I know, honey, me too. I wish he'd hurry up. Mr. 
and Mrs. Blair. Yes. After performing a biopsy and several other tests, we've learned the cause of your illness. You have a very rare disease known as bronchopulmonary amylosis. Amyl Emma what? Let me try to explain. An amyloid is a protein that becomes hyperactive and begins to tear down the tissues and the nerves in the body. There is no known cure, but with chemotherapy and other conservative treatment, we hope to stop the spread of the disease. What do you mean you hope to stop the spread of the disease? What are you trying to say? What do you mean? Well, the odds are long. Uh, the probability is in 95% of the cases that the disease is terminal. I'm sorry to have to bring you this news. How you doing? How do you think? You know, God will provide. You know that. You should know that. I don't want to hear anything about God providing. God didn't do anything to stop what happened to you. God didn't do anything about my wife. You know, I don't understand anymore. So that's the last thing I want to hear, God will provide. Who are you? You're not the little brother that grew up in this church with me. You're not the same. Dad taught you better than this, and you know that. I don't believe what I'm hearing. Who are you now? You have to be stronger than this, David. You know this. What would Dad say if he was right here, right now? What would he say to you? You gotta be stronger than this, you know that. The ball's in your court. That's all I have to say. David, trials and tribulations, do you remember that?
sure. Okay. Just be a few more minutes. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I'll leave you. Mary's going to bring them by a little later to see you today. That would be so great. Yeah, yeah. So what are you doing today? Today, just running around. Got some busy work to do for the church. Okay. Tamika, are you afraid? No. I'm not afraid of this disease because I don't own this disease. Yeah. David? I know you've been under a lot of pressure these past couple of weeks, but I need to know that that you'll be strong enough for the kids and me. I know I'm a strong-willed woman, but I get weak sometimes. And I just need to know, David, that, that you will be strong enough for the both of us. Do you understand? I do. And I will. I will, baby. Seventeen twenty. Do you remember that verse? Matthew seventeen twenty. Faith of a mustard seed. Yeah, I remember that. Pastor Blair, do you even have faith? I just thought you need to read that verse and believe it, because that shows how just how little our faith is now. Pastor Blair, I'm not preaching to you. But open up your heart and let God do his will. Boy, I 
tell you, you need to straighten up. Because God is not pleased at all. If I could hear my mother pray again. If I could hear So it's over? I'd say it's over. I just don't think I have what it takes to preach. My faith is small and I just, I don't believe like I used to. You're just under a lot of stress. You haven't lost your faith, have you? I don't think I can ever go back to church. I don't understand. There's sickness diseases, wars, little babies are dying of diseases that they have nothing to do with. All these terrible things that are going on that God can end and he doesn't. It's like, I'm just sick of seeing terrible things happen to perfectly good people. You remember the first time you told me about Christ? Yeah, I remember. And you gave me your Bible? Yeah. He was like, just read it. I mean, you told me that. All the, all the answers to all the questions I ever had were in the pages of that little black book. You remember that? Yeah, I remember. So what happened? You used to be so strong. You know the word better than any, any preacher I know. God gave you a talent to, to, to help trouble you. I mean, even help me out when we were kids. I don't even know why I've changed. I just don't believe like I used to. But I will say one thing, I appreciate you being here for me. <laughs> no, David, I've never said thank you. So what's next? I don't know. Well, I tell you, it's too cold out here. I'm gonna buy some coffee. She's so tired. Yeah. I miss her. I do too, Josh. Dad, do you still believe she can make it? <sighs> I don't know, Josh. She hasn't responded to the chemotherapy. You know, your mom's a strong woman, but I don't know. We just gotta sit and wait. You mean sit and pray? No, I didn't say that. But you and your sister can pray. Why are you saying that, Dad? You're not acting like yourself. What do you mean I'm not acting like myself? I don't even know you anymore. What do you mean, you don't know me anymore? I'm the same father you knew a week ago, Joshua. The father I knew was a pastor and a believer. You're none of those. I'm sick and tired of people coming to me and asking me, when are you coming to church? It's not that easy. I gotta be strong right now. I need to spend more time with you and your sister. We need to help each other through this right now. No, you need God in your life. Without God, you're nothing. I think he knew this more than I do.
get you the best doctors. Whatever it takes, you can be okay. Just stay strong, baby. I need you. The kids need you. I miss you. You can be okay. Reverend Blair. Forget the Reverend Blair stuff, just call me David. Okay, David, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Your wife's last test revealed that the disease has spread to her heart, lungs, and kidneys. The only thing we can do now is to get ready. What do you mean, get ready? I mean, there's very little chance that your wife is going to get better. So, enjoy these last few weeks with her. And if you need to, a prayer wouldn't hurt. Are you going to go to church with us because Auntie Mary is outside and she's waiting? No. You guys go. I'll see you later. Are you sure, Dad? Okay. This is David Blair again. And why? It's 9.30 at night. With the kids? All right, I'll be right there.
possible. Pastor Blair, this morning we conducted another series of tests on your wife. And we can't find a trace of the embolosis. We can't explain what happened. But a couple hours later, she got up from the bed and wanted to come here to the church. Good evening, church. Good you know, first I would like to say that I'm sorry for my lack of faith in these last few months. Sometimes even the pastor loses a little faith. I've been at this church my whole life. I remember playing out in the parking lot and running through the hallways of this church. And my pastor uh, was also my father, I should say. He would tell me, you know, boy, one day you're going to grow up to be the pastor of this church. And I just thought he was trying to scare me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I tell him, no, I'm going to be a rodeo rider or a police officer or a hockey player, even though I never ice skated. You know, because I, I knew even at a young age, I saw the responsibility my father had of being a pastor of a church. And I knew that that was something that I just couldn't do. And so, you know, I would tell him that and he would just look at me. And he would just smile as if he knew that, well, you're destined to be a pastor and that's what you will be. And he knew that because he was a good father. I never told him I wanted to preach. So when I got old enough and I became an actual member of this church, um, I became a youth pastor. Because there's nothing greater than seeing a young, misguided teenager turn their life around and start living for the Lord. So, for instance, one of those teenagers, Pastor Daniels, he's my friend. You know, you told me the other day that I taught you the ways of the Lord, that I was an example to you of how to really follow the Lord. And I have to tell you, that was one of my darkest hours, and my friend, you have returned the favor. Thank you. Amen. You know, also, I like to thank Mrs. Williams, who we all know and love. She gave me a mustard seed at my graduation like she does every year. Hallelujah. And uh, I remember when she gave me that mustard seed, I was thinking, I don't need this. I'm a preacher's kid, and I grew up in the church, and I know the Bible, and, you know, what's a, I don't need this mustard seed. How many of you knew I was wrong? Mrs. Williams, I heard you the other night when I was packing up my boxes to end my, my minister career here. I heard you, and I thank you for directing me back to that path of righteousness. Praise God, son. Thank you. Praise the word, son. Praise God. God is good. Now, I don't know what the future holds, and I don't know what his plans are, but I know he has plans to prosper you and me and plans to prosper us and never to harm us. I know that that's the truth. You know, sometimes that plan seems to take a detour and it takes us down the road of trials and tribulations, but that's just a road to test us to see if, if we are ready to go to that next level that he wants to take us to. What I've learned is that with the faith of a mustard seed, we come out of that and God delivers us every time from sickness and disease. He delivers us from from verges of divorces and restores families. I've seen God restore people to their right mind who were strung out on drugs and alcohol when they wanted to give up. But you know, they had the faith of a mustard seed that maybe if they just kept on for one more night, you know, if they made it through that midnight hour, that maybe tomorrow would be a little bit better. And it was. God is so good. You know, Matthew, 17 verses 20 it's the truth and we have to believe because god has given us the power to overcome any and everything that we think is going to take us out i thank god for the holy spirit our comforter i thank him for jesus our savior i thank you that we don't have to worry about anything because 
God will guide us. He will lead us. He will comfort us. And all you have to do is take a stand and know that you have everything on the inside of you to make it through to the next level. You have everything inside of you to stand up and really walk in your calling. Not everybody's called to be a minister. Not everybody's called to lead in that way, but we're all leaders because if you've been delivered and if you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior, then you're a leader. You're a leader in your home. You're a leader on your job. You're a leader. You're a leader in your school. You're a leader because Jesus has called us to be more than conquerors. And so I love you, church, and I thank you for this opportunity to stand and be your pastor. I'm not my father, and I'm not my brother, but I know that I have a place here, and we are going to go to the next level together. I thank you. my lips and my heart.